Hi, it's Matt here from Go Green Autos. So in this video, we're just going to ask the question, are electric cars or vans heavier than their petrol or diesel counterparts? So this is something I hear people bang on about so much, that electric cars are heavy and they wear out their tyres quicker. And they'll often use the Tesla Model S as an example of that. And true, these are heavy cars, but they're also huge cars, particularly here in the UK. They are much wider and bigger than uh, a lot of other cars. And the mistake they make is they compare a Tesla Model S with a normal family size car. But if you were to compare this with something the same, let's say a Mercedes S-Class or an Audi A8 or some other big, large executive car, then actually they're not any heavier. So I've got the V5 here for this car and the maximum permissible mass is 2,590 kilos. That's fully loaded, all the passengers and all the um, cargo. The mass in service is 2,175 kilos. That includes 75 kilo allowance for a driver. So the car actually weighs 2,100 kilos. So yes, this is a big heavy car, but let's look at the alternative. Let's say a Mercedes S-Class at the same age was the nearest comparison and those weigh anything from 1,955 kilos for the lightest uh, base spec model right up to 2,270 kilos for a higher spec model. So in reality exactly the same as the Tesla Model S. So obviously with electric vehicle we have a battery pack and those are heavy and on Teslas in particular they do have very large battery packs so there is a lot of weight in that pack. But you don't have an engine, you don't have a gearbox, you don't have a turbo, an alternator and all those other components that go on the engine and you don't have a fuel tank and you also don't have 50 to 80 kilograms of fuel in that fuel tank. So obviously you have an electric motor on an EV, your engine is an electric motor, but they are smaller and lighter than an engine. Well, certainly when you factor in the weight of a gearbox, gearboxes are huge, heavy lumps and an EV powertrain is smaller and lighter than an engine and a gearbox. So let's look at some other vehicles. So I've got this uh, Nissan ENV 200 electric van here in the workshop. So this is a good example uh, because Nissan obviously make the NV 200 uh, diesel equivalent. So this particular one is a 24 kilowatt hour uh, ENV 200. This actual one is a Techno spec because it's got the alloy wheels, but the majority of them are, are the Ascenta spec. So let's just go with that. So in electric, the Ascenta is 1,517 kilos curb weight, and the diesel is 1,272. So on these, the electric version, you're looking about 245 kilograms heavier than the diesel version. However, one thing which isn't clear is whether the curb weight includes the uh, tank of diesel. It is meant to be, and generally I think it does, but it's different markets have different rules, and I have seen various figures for some of these vehicles I'm going to quote. So in this case, on an NV200 diesel, you would have about 48 kilograms of diesel if you filled the tank. Um, but yeah, for this video, I'm going to ignore that and assume curb weights include a full tank of diesel. On some vehicles, they say uh, the curb weight includes a tank at 90%, some is 100, but this information just isn't out there. So, um, you know, it could be no diesel in the tank, half a tank, 90% tank or 100% tank. So we're looking at generally 50, 60, 70 kilos of weight in a diesel tank. So let's have a look at another EV, in this case a family sized car, the Hyundai Ioniq electric with the 28 kilowatt hour battery pack. So that weighs 1,420 kilos if it's the premium model and the premium SE weighs 1,475 kilos because it's got more equipment. If we look at the petrol hybrid version, 
It weighs 1,370 for the base model and 1,477 kilos for the top spec model. So generally what you find with electric vehicles is they put more kit on the EVs. Uh, so generally um, you've got to compare the higher spec or the best spec ICE version if you're going to compare it with the diesel. So in this case we'll compare the high spec one. So we're looking at 1,477 for the hybrid versus 1,475 for the EV. So the EV is actually two kilograms lighter. So obviously with the Ionic, the petrol version is a hybrid. So with hybrids, you do have some additional weight of a small electric motor and a small battery. But on the other side, the engines tend to be smaller as well. Uh, but it's still a valid comparison because all combustion engine vehicles are going to hybrid now um, as we get nearer that complete phase out in eight years time. So next we'll look at another van, in this case the Renault Kango. It's been in production for a very long time and in electric it's been here since uh, about 2011. So if we take the latest version which has got the larger 33 kilowatt hour battery pack and we're looking here at the ML20 model. So in electric, in pure electric, it is has a curb weight of uh, 1,505 kilos but in diesel, it has a curb weight of 1,309 to 1,325. So in this case, again, the electric is slightly heavier, but only by 188 kilograms. So next we'll look at a small SUV. Uh, and I haven't been selective with what the vehicles I'm picking. I've just picked them at complete random. So we'll look at the Peugeot E2008 because that's available in both petrol, diesel and full electric. So the EV comes in at 1,548 kilos. The petrol uh, is the lightest at 1,188 kilos, but the top spec version with all the kit is 1,205 and the diesel is also 1,205. So again, the EV version is slightly heavier and in this case, 343 kilos heavier. So next let's look at the best-selling electric vehicle which is the Tesla Model 3. So obviously there's different motor and battery options with the car but let's look at the complete range and the weight uh, goes from 1726 kilos up to 1847 kilos. So obviously with the Tesla there isn't a combustion engine version because they're an electric only brand but the nearest alternative or the competitor car would be the BMW 3 series. Again with this there are many different options and specs but the range varies from 1520 to 1955 so a little bit heavier than the Tesla, but if we go bang in the middle of both, we are pretty much the same weight for both cars. So no extra weight for the Tesla Model 3. So yes, EVs can be a little bit heavier than their petrol or diesel um, alternative, but not by much, not by the amount of weight that uh, sort of gets perceived. And in reality, it's the weight of a couple of passengers. Um, but on some vehicles where they're designed from the ground up to be electric, then there's no additional weight because they're designed to be lighter and more efficient. So uh, the idea that EVs wear out tyres uh, more is, again, a load of rubbish. EVs do not need special tyres. They aren't generally any heavier. I've been driving EVs for six years or so. Uh, lots of different brakes and models and yeah none of them are worn out tyres at a greater rate than any other previous cars. Um, looking at the Renault Zoe here actually, Michelin did um, develop an EV only tyre called the Energy EV and it was only fitted on the Zoe. Um, and they're meant to be a lower rolling resistant tyre. The reality is they were absolutely awful tyres, they fell apart. I've done a video on that on the channel already. 
um, and the result was they actually did wear out quicker but that wasn't because of the weight of the car or anything like that or the performance of the car because the Zoe isn't a high performance EV it was just because the tyre was badly made so yes if you have a high performance electric car then yeah you can wear the tyres out but then you've got to compare it like for like and uh, when looking at the Model S here if you were looking at something like a Bentley or a Porsche or something then that's going to wear out the tyres exactly the same as this does and if you're going to drive around like a nutter no matter whether it's electric or petrol or diesel you're going to wear your tyres out so I've just fitted Michelin cross climate tyres to my Tesla here because I'm keeping this. So I'll do a long term review um, on how these uh, have worn and how they've lasted on the Tesla in due course. But I fitted these because I think all season tyres are a, a good option for the UK climate. So in conclusion, electric cars aren't really much heavier than their alternatives. It's one of those things that, get, that gets repeated so many times, people just start to believe it. Uh, if we're looking at this Zoe here, for example, this is 1,468 kilos. So um, not a heavy car, exactly the same uh, as your typical family combustion engine car. And if people just compared like for like, then as you can see, there's not much difference. And in most cases, hardly anything. Instead of straight away focusing on the biggest, largest electric car and comparing that to the average. Thank you for watching the video. This channel gets small viewing numbers. So to get the video noticed in people's feeds, YouTube favors videos with what they term engagement. And that basically means comments. So please do comment on the video. Do ask me questions. Tell me what you want to see next. Also hit the little thumbs up button if you found the video useful or you liked it. Do subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button and then press the bell to be notified when new videos get uploaded. Also have a look at the back catalogue of videos. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of videos on the channel already. And also use the search function to find videos that you might find interesting. Thank you very much.